Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now there's no doubt that part of firearms ownership is your ability to keep firearms safe from getting into anybody's unwanted hands. And today we're gonna take a look at a product that's gonna help us do that. Now generally for me on the average, there's a couple of different ways I go, either in a larger cabinet or in smaller lockbox style sort of safes in, again, not really a safe, but a general lockbox. Today, we're gonna take a look at a product here. This is a nice little electronic gun safe. And this came way to me by the people at New View Hunting, who have a number of different types of product lines, everything from apparel and cameras, and in this particular case, a pistol case intended to keep your pistols out of people's hands, but more specifically, sort of in vehicles. So that's a great opportunity for me. You know, I don't have anything that's really good and suitable for the vehicle application, but here a nice little electronic lockbox, safe style, the ability to sort of program this to my needs and keep my firearm safe if I happen to be in my vehicle. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through this in detail. I'm gonna get into some practical applications with my particular handguns, see what size might fit in here and all of the details associated with this. So when we get back, we'll get into all the details. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at New View Hunting who did provide this for review. And so as we get into this here, I do have a few different ways of going about maintaining a level of safety with my firearms. As I mentioned, larger cabinets or larger safes. I have been a big fan of just very simple lockbox style options. These are portable, fairly lightweight, very easy, all in all. And I'm gonna do my little combination here off screen. But all in all, the ability to fit a number of different sizes of handguns, potentially even with some magazines. And you know, in some cases it gets a little bit tight, but you can pretty much in, in most cases uh, get away with slightly larger firearms but it can be a little bit limited. I've had a little bit of a hard time fitting some of the larger handguns in here. Not too big of a deal, but it's a consideration. And today, again, we're gonna look at an offering from New View Hunting, which this particular lockbox here is gonna be fairly similar conceptually, only you do end up with a key entry, you do end up with a push button entry, and I'm hoping that the biometric finger scanner is going to work well. So it gives me a few different options to actually get into this unit. So as we take a look here, we're gonna see this should be a pretty nice option and it is considered to be a portable option, which allows it to be leveraged inside a vehicle, which I can tell you is a place where I absolutely have to maintain a level of security. I do have my firearms with me quite often. I do have them with me in my vehicle quite often. And there are certain places, if you're a law-abiding citizen and a responsible gun owner, that at certain points in time in your vehicle, you will need to lock it up. So here you can see, this is called the Mad Oats Lockbox. This has a keypad, this has a biometric, and it should have a physical key, which yes. So awesome to have three different ways to get into this. So this will have a battery, and if the battery is running low, you do have the physical mechanical key entry, which is awesome. So taking a look at it here, you do have some keys and some accessories. You end up with your warranty card and instruction manual, very simple setup scan code, so that's cool a locking cable, and a power cable, a micro USB. Then on top of that, you end up with a leather carrying strap, so very nice. As we take a look at the general construction, seemingly nicely made, seemingly fairly robust and sturdy. You have some feet on the underside, on the backside, nice hinges, very robust. Turning this around, you can see this is where I will mount my carrying strap. 
over the front. Again, you end up with your keypad, you end up with your biometric, you end up with your physical ability here to actually get on the key and a power cable port. As you take a look, your port right on the front. Leveraging your physical key here, and as we open this up, you can see it does pop this open. So that's nice. Again, a little more paperwork here. So just a nice little touch. Very cool. And you'll see right at the beginning, sincerely, Mad Oats. Keep your gun safe in cars. So nice little sort of letter looking thing. A cleaning cloth and a carrying case. So a nice setup here so far. You end up with some foam, which I'm gonna take a quick look at in here. So yes, some foam both for the top and the bottom and a very simple case. Now we're gonna take a look at this first in terms of the overall size. So you can see here, this is my SIG P365XL, which is my carry weapon. So you can see this does you know, fit in this orientation. You could certainly fit two handguns here, no problem. You could also fit a number of magazines. So that's awesome. Here, my Canik Mete SFT, little bit larger, a full frame gun. You'll see it's not, uh, yeah, no, I take that back. This is absolutely going to fit in the horizontal application and that's awesome. You could probably get away with fitting two slightly larger handguns in here as well with optics. So that's great. The size of this lockbox is effective and efficient. I would say you certainly could fit two in here if you're careful. As you take a look here, I mean, trying to get my P365, yes, in with my Canik Mete SFT, that does work. So you could potentially put two handguns in here nicely. Again, as we go to close this, no problem. You will have the ability to leverage both the physical key. So you have your mechanical key here, which is awesome, and then also the keypad and the biometrics. But generally speaking, this does seem to be sound. You would have to get busy trying to dig this open. Could you break this open? Probably, I'm not gonna try, but of course, you know, for the most part, I would say, if you've ever heard the phrase, locks only keep honest people out, well, that's kind of the point. And I think it's going to be sturdy enough that a kid or somebody that you really don't want getting their hands on this would struggle to get that open. I mean, I can't say for sure whether or not I'd be able to wedge under here. It does look like I would potentially be able to get a pry bar or something like that under there and really wrench this open. So it's not like a full-fledged safe uh, keep in mind the fact that this is a lockbox, so lockbox style, um, and the ability just to keep your firearms out of people's hands and, more than anything else, abide by the law when you need to. That's the main thing for me. You know, for me, I do feel like, for the most part, I get the respect that I need from the people that I need it from. So really, for the most part, it's maintaining a level of compliance with the law. But as we move forward, I'm gonna get this outfit with the leather strap real quick, which just will help me with my ability to carry this around. You can see here, as we get this strap leveraged and into place, you do have some holes on the side, the ability to leverage these little sort of screws here. So the thumb screws threading in very easy, nice quality feeling very very good on the threads no problem and a nice little detail here and very easy to put this on or take it off if you don't want it there so that's nice so generally speaking so far very cool so again you can see that nice little carrying strap Something else that's important and worth mentioning the fact that you can leverage this in the vehicle I would like to actually literally physically connect this underneath like a bench seat or something like that. So here you can see this nice cable. It does fit right in the back side here. So as you take a look, that index is right inside the lockbox. What you would basically do is you would go around a physical part of your vehicle. You would loop this through. And then once your cable is looped around, drop that inside. And then once this is closed, you can see that does then attach it. Again, could that be broken and snapped off? Sure, but it's enough to be a deterrent to slow people down 
and to keep honest people honest. So in that particular case, that should work out very well for me. Now with this plugged in, you can see, pressing the buttons here, that is working, which is nice. And then the biometrics. So everything coming to life, I will have to program it, but at least now that it's got juice, we're trending in the right direction. And so of course you don't wanna stay tethered to the cable. So the default password here, one, 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 one. That's not good. One, 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 one. There we go. So that is one of the things that you need to be just a little bit careful of with, you know, electronics like this. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but moving forward, getting a nine volt battery installed here. Now this will give you a low battery warning if this does start to run low, but at least here you can see pretty straightforward and getting that into place. Now at this point, I should be able to leverage this fully untethered. So that's down. One, 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 one. There we go. So that worked very well. You'll notice that did flash green. So pressing that back down, this will time out. You'll see the lights will go off. There it is. So you kind of need to like wake it up. So there you go. And again, it flashes green. So at this point, I can actually change the code. Now, the way you do this, there's a reset button right on the inside. So again, press the reset button and release. Press the number one. And at this point, I can change the code. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's see if that worked. Closing it again. Mm. It's not seeming happy with me. We'll try this one last time. It says press the reset button and release it, then press the number one, enter a six digit code. If the green light indicator flashes once, your code has been successfully registered. So I gotta watch for this to flash green. So press the reset button and release it. Press the number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Flashing green. Closing the box. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that time it worked. So I think I just needed to be a little more careful, paying attention and making sure that I was quite deliberate. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So it does seem to be working more appropriately. I think that was a little bit of user error and impatience. Now for the fingerprints, this does say it can store up to 100 fingerprints. You're gonna basically do this very, very similar. So we're gonna press and release the reset button and then press the number two. So here, press two. And then we're gonna get the fingers stored in here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and it flashes green, that should be stored. So at this point, that's a danger of these. It doesn't like it. All right, so let's try it again. Press the reset button, press the number two. Now we're gonna program There we go, that looks better. There we go. So you need to press your finger and hold down longer. So I'll do it again. Now I'm gonna program each one of my fingers. If this can hold up to 100, I'm gonna do all of my fingers just to have all those combinations. So again, if I hit reset, the number two. Now I'm gonna do my middle finger. There we go. Trending in the right direction. There we go. So this is just a little getting used to. You'll notice each time this foam kind of falls out, that's a little bit annoying. I might put a little uh, double-sided adhesive to hold that in, but we're gonna do this one more time here. 
So hitting the reset button, the number two. Uh, we've done these two fingers, now I'm gonna do this one. One, two, three. It doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. That works. So again, a little bit hit or miss. Reset button, number two. One, two, three. Pressing the lid. It's very sensitive. You need to be very careful. So again, this is at least at this point programmed. I can now go this way. I can go this way. Or if I have to, I can go with the key. So we're getting close. And so all in all, pretty cool from the people at Mad Oats and New View Hunting. Now I do need to say, I think you need to be just a little bit careful with a safe like this. It's no problem if this is in the back of my truck. It's no problem if I'm using it for general security. I don't know if I would use this for emergency situation. Like for example, if I thought I needed to get into this super fast and reliable, this might not be the best option for me. It's definitely suitable, but you just need to be careful. Understand the limitations, understand the fact that, you know, the battery can die or the numbers might not press correctly or your finger might be dirty and full of grime or it doesn't pick up with the sensor. So there is a place for this. I do like it. I think you just need to be a little bit careful. So at this point, I mean, there's only one last thing for me to do. Get this out into my truck, get it stashed away, fashioned to my truck, leveraging the lock and having it in place when I need it. So again, to the people at New View Hunting, thank you very much for providing this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. Uh-oh. I'll see you soon.